and welcome to another Marty's Matchbox Makeovers video. Today I am doing over this number 38B, a Vauxhall Victor, and these came out in 1963. So this one has a red interior, they also came out with a mint green interior. So as I said before, it's number 38, it comes out with the silver grey wheels. It's a nice lemon yellow colour. The windscreen on this one's pretty bad. It's got a lot of spider cracks in it, which I'm not happy about. They're very difficult to disguise, but I'll do my best. The tailgate is broken, and so is the tow hook. So, as usual, I shall drill out the rivet post. But before I do, I'm going to drill out the center of this rivet, so I can tap it later on. It's easier to do it at this stage because the drill is self-centering. So now that I've done that, I use a slightly larger drill to remove the head of the rivet. So I sweep off the metal filings. It's always good to keep a clean work area. That should do it. Now I just use a very small flat bladed screwdriver and gently lever the base off of the body. So here's another close up of that tow hitch that's broken. Now I'm going to remove the interior. This one's red, remember? They also came out with the mint green, as I said before. It's a bit grubby, but that will clean up well. Next, I've got to remove the windscreen. Uh, interestingly, the tailgate is held in position by the windscreen at the rear there. So I'm going to drill this rivet out, and it's very shallow. So I'm going to use this special modified drill that has a shallow cut, so I don't go through the roof. I'm always a little bit nervous when I do this, because on occasions I have drilled right through the model. But today I think I got away with it. Once again, I'm keeping a clean workplace. So having removed the head of the rivet, I can now gently prise off the transparency. You have to be very careful with this so you don't crack them. This transparency is very grubby and scratched and scoured and shows sun damage, so I think I'm going to struggle to make this look good. But, you know, some you win, some you lose. These are the screws that I'm going to use to refit the base of the model. They're called M2 button-headed Allen screws, and they are four millimeters long. Here I'm removing the hinge pin of the rear tailgate that was broken. A subscriber sent me a box of spare parts and in the box there just happened to be a replacement tailgate for this model so I'm really pleased. This one came off of a gold coloured model. Now I'm going to cut a screw thread so I can refit the base using those M2 screws. So this is a small tap that I got from eBay. I bought a job a lot of them and as you can see normally they are pointy tipped but the one I use I ground the tip off of it so that I can go further into the hole that I've drilled previously. That way I can get away with using longer screws if necessary. It always helps to put a little bit of lubricant on the hole before you tap the thread. I used to use a T-piece to hold the tap but I've since upgraded to this handy little hand chuck which is much easier to use. Now I'm doing a test fit of the M2 screw to make sure that the screw thread has been cut deep enough. Well that looks quite good. I'm happy with that. I'm not happy about this though. After I drilled the hole I stood my battery drill up and it fell over and bent my drill. So I'm going to have to buy another one of these. Now I'm going to start paint stripping the model. 
This gold paint looks like it's on pretty thick. Hopefully it will come off easily. I'm using my preferred paint stripper. It's the Poly Stripper Paint Stripper and it's a gel formula. It seems to work really well. So I always apply it with a spare paintbrush that I have set aside for this purpose and ensure that I get even coverage all over. It doesn't take long, maybe a couple of minutes and you can already see the paint blistering. Let's see how this gold paint goes. Today I thought that I would leave the wheels on this model and just paint strip around them. But as you will see later, I ended up removing them anyway, because I found it too awkward to repaint the base black with the wheels in situ. I'm now putting on some rubber gloves. I'm in the habit of using rubber gloves these days because I find it easier to strip the paint by holding the model rather than having it in some tongs or similar. As you can see, I had these parts sealed in a container there. I believe that the paint stripper works more efficiently if you can somehow trap the fumes in around the model. I once used a Ziploc sandwich bag and it seemed to work quite well so today I thought I'd use the lid on these uh, disposable containers. I broke one of my rules today. I didn't mix the matching paint before I paint stripped it. I completely forgot. Luckily there is some original paint still remaining on the inside of the body just here. So that's what I'm going to use to match the paint for this model. Otherwise I'd be doing it by guesswork. Oh, there's a little bit there on the tailgate too that I could have used. So let's get on with it and try and replicate that colour. Now today I'm starting with Mr Hobby number one which is gloss white. I'm going to add a few drops of this lemon yellow Tamiya paint number X8. I bought some new uh, paint stirrers the other day but I didn't realise they're twice as thick as the normal ones I use. So I'm a little bit annoyed that I wasn't paying attention but I'm stuck with them now. I've got about 500 of the things. Anyway, moving on put a splash of yellow in there and look at that instantly it changes color it's amazing how the white changes color just from a couple of drops of paint miraculously I'm quite close and I was just winging it there but I actually think it's a little bit too yellow so I put another splash of white in mix it up and go for another comparison hmm Yep, I think I've pretty much nailed it there. So that's the colour I'm going with, the one on the left. A couple of points of note, paint dries darker than it is when it's wet and also the Mr Hobby paints are compatible with the Tamiya paints, it's always handy to know. So I'm just going to seal that up for later use. Now that the paint's been removed I'm going to use a steel wool pad that I bought from the local supermarket just to scuff up the surface of the model to receive the undercoat that I'm going to put on. It also helps to remove any minor abrasions etc. It gets a bit messy on the workbench because the, the steel wool pad just kind of disintegrates as you're using it. This is what the vehicle looks like after I've scuffed it up. Here is the tailgate that was originally gold. I'm now fitting it to the model for the first time and as you can see it is a perfect fit. This is what the pads look like when you start and this is what they look like when you finish. So I've got a bit of cleaning up to do here before I move on. I have a marvellous wife called Julie and she normally does the cleaning up for me. But she's out shopping with her mother today. She's got her eye on a new electric toothbrush for some reason. So it's left me to clean up after myself. The floor's a bit mucky too, so it's got all swarf and iron filings and stuff and uh... Oh, what the? 
I just sat up a car. That never happens when Julie's here. Oh, okay, I'm gonna get it out, let's see. Where are you? Where are I? Hang on, that's not it. What? How did that get in there? There's another one. This is stupid. Oh. Uh, I don't understand. I'm gonna have to talk to her when she gets home. Alrighty then, it's time to put the primer on. I'm using the Tamiya Surface Primer White. One of the best primers you can buy in my book. Doesn't obscure the details and goes on sweet. That's the tailgate, now for the body. I love the way these models look after they've been undercoated. You can see all the details in the casting. They look magnificent. Almost tempted to leave them like this. On inspection, however, I noticed that, well, not only is this grill perfectly formed, but there's also an imperfection on the top here. Just on the roof, there's like a gouge in it. So I'm going to have to fill that up now with some body filler. Sand it down and then repaint it. I'm using a very small amount of humbral body filler. It dries quickly and sands beautifully smooth. I put a little bit too much on. But, uh, that's not a problem because I just remove the excess with a wet finger. And take that little bit out of there. And I know it looks a bit rough at the moment but I'm going to sand it down. I'm going to sand it down with some very fine emery paper. And it's going to look great. I'm going to fix this uh, rear trailer hitch. I've been thinking about it and I've come up with a plan where I'm going to use a piece of plastic from this model kit. Using this piece as well as the piece off of this, I'm going to try and fabricate a replacement trailer hitch. So here's the parts that I'm going to use. The one on the left is going to be the tow ball and the plate is going to be the tow bar tongue. I'm going to use the corner as it's naturally rounded and should look more like the original tow hook. So I'm just going to mark it up with a pencil and cut it out with a craft knife. There, that should look good. Now, you don't actually have to cut through with this material. You can basically score it deeply and then snap the piece off that you don't want. So I'm just doing that now. It leaves a bit of a ragged edge. But when it's done, I just sand it down with some emery paper and make it look neat. It's very fiddly and as you can see, I'm holding the piece with some long nose pliers. After I made it, I realized that it was a bit short and I could actually make a longer one that goes, extends. I could actually make a longer one that extends into the rear boot. So I end up doing that, and this is what it looks like. To insert the vertical toe ball, I've marked a hole in the end of the tongue, and I'm gonna heat up this bent paper clip, and I'm gonna use it to pierce the plastic. This is the hole that the tow ball is going to fit into and I'm going to glue it into place. To make sure it fits I use the exact size drill as the plastic piece I'm going to use. And then I just run it through with my fingers and I make a perfect hole for the tow ball part to fit into. After sanding off the rough edges of the hole, this is what it looks like. I now secure it to the model using some super glue and baking soda. And I think it looks quite good, almost original. 
I just blend it in using some extra super glue and baking powder mix and then sand it so it looks nice. The section on top of the base there is going to fit into a recess in the boot. You'll see later on. It works quite well. Now it's time for me to paint the model. First off I'm doing the tailgate with this beautiful vintage lemon yellow colour that I mixed up. It really suits this vehicle. Now I'm doing the main body. Don't forget to do the inside when you do these vehicles because if the rear door is open people will tend to look into it and if you haven't painted inside then it looks pretty ordinary. Here's a close up of the finish. It's not too bad. Now this transparency is, I'm going to struggle to make this look good, but I'm going to give it my best shot. I'm going to polish it up with this uh, auto sole metal polish like I normally do. But uh, those spider cracks, you cannot, you cannot hide them. They're just going to be there forever. I should really have bought a replacement glass for this model. Some of these came out with a mint green interior and others came out with a red interior. So this one I'm making mint green just for something different. I made this colour using this uh, Mr. Hobby emerald green and a little bit of white. These tyres look a little bit shabby so I clean them up in some hot soapy water. And then I give them a quick dust over with some uh, silver grey paint. This is one of the few models that I have that came out with silver grey metal wheels. After polishing the transparency, I'm going to try and give it a top coat of some floor polish. So I'm just going to immerse it into this self-shining gloss floor polish. And then I'm going to place it onto a piece of kitchen towel to wick away any excess product. Make sure there's no air bubbles on it because they're always very noticeable. And I'm going to cover it up with this little container lid that I've got here uh, to keep the dust off. I'll come back in about an hour and see what it looks like. Next up I've just got to give the base a quick coat of some black spray. I use this satin black Australian export paint and it goes on beautifully. Uh, not only that I don't have to clean my spray gun after using it which is always a bit of a chore. Look at that, it looks almost like new. Now I'm out in the shed and I'm using my modified nail method to reform the end of the axles to keep the wheels on. Details of this method can be found in several of my other videos. I'm somewhat touched that other restorers have adopted this method of reforming the axle ends. Some of them even call it Marty's method. And I find that quite flattering, so thank you for that. They look just like the original axle ends. Right, that's all the parts painted and finished off. Now I've just got to assemble them. I'm going to start up with putting the transparency in using a little blob of silicon here on the end of a toothpick. Now before I push the windscreen flat, I have to insert the rear tailgate on this model because the hinge point is actually held in position by the transparency. Now I place the mint green interior in that I painted, closely followed by the base. That just snaps in and then I secure it with that uh, colour match screw in the hole that I tapped a thread in early on in the video. Wow, I really love the look of that base. And the wheels run three too, which is always a good thing. So here's a reminder of what we started with. I'm sure you'll agree, this model has seen better days. And this is what it looks like now. With a new coat of paint, rejuvenated wheels, new axles, beautiful chrome grille and headlights, and a mint green interior, this looks like a brand new model. I actually did two of these models this time around. 
one with mint green interior and this one with a red interior. This one's towing a caravan. These Vauxhall Victors were the vehicle of choice if you were going away on holiday and you had a big family. They could tow a caravan or a boat with ease. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you again in another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Goodbye. Oh, f Ah, you f it's gone again. Something up this f airbrush.